All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over some basics of actually how to make useful measurements of the waveform. So there's three basic ways to make measurements. Uh, one is that you can actually use the graticules and the division scale to figure out the frequency and the period and the peak to peak amplitude and all that fun stuff. So the simplest way to make a measurement from an oscilloscope, and this is true of uh, older analog scopes, is to just look at what the, your scales are, what your uh, vertical division and horizontal divisions are, and just do the math. And so our horizontal scale is one millisecond. So for every reticule, every division is one millisecond. So we have our trigger level set at zero volts. And we can count one, two, three, four. So this is one full period of the sine wave. So that means four milliseconds per period, which means 250 hertz. And then we can see the vertical scale is one, two, three, four, five, six times 300 millivolts. That's going to be about 1.8 volts plus two fifths of that. And so it's going to be roughly two volts from peak to peak. Now, uh, I chose a frequency of 250 hertz just because I know it would actually make the math easy. But if you had some kind of odd, so let me just change the frequency a little bit so it's off. It's like that. And let's change the amplitude. And we'll just change it randomly. So it's not, doesn't quite, you can still get roughly um, what the frequency is and roughly what the peak to peak voltage is. Uh, but one of the ways that's very useful uh, in measuring all kinds of things is to use the cursors. So we're over here, we're just going to press this button. So that brings up the cursors. So the default is to uh, have these two vertical bars. And this is where, again, we'll use the multi-purpose knobs. And so this is going to be A. I'm going to move this right into the middle. And I'm going to move this over to where I think the period... Uh, ends and again you can change from fine to coarse if it takes too long and roughly there and here it tells you uh, various bits of information so it will tell you that the the period is 3.7 milliseconds so it's obviously going to be a shorter period than we had before of four milliseconds so you can say the frequency is going to be higher. Now with this oscilloscope, you can change the information that's displayed of the cursors. Uh, to do that, we just go up to uh, measure and configure cursors. And we want to change the channel, yeah, multi-purpose A. And we're going to change that to Hertz. And menu off, menu off. So now it tells us a little bit more directly. Uh, it's 270 Hertz. And with the function generator, it's coming out at 269.9 and also down here it tells you a little bit more precisely. Now you can also use the cursors to measure not only the horizontal but also the vertical. So for that we just press the cursors twice, our second time, and we can line up where we want to measure. So I'm going to go, I'm going to measure between that peak and that peak. I'm going to click select. Now I can move these up and down. So the advantage of that is now I can measure the peak to peak voltage as well as the, well, now I've got half the uh, period of 1. Point, yeah, 1 1.9 milliseconds. All right, now a third way to make measurements on the oscilloscope, and this is probably the easiest. So we're going to turn the cursors off is to actually have the machine do the measurements for me. So, so to do that, just press the measure button. And I want to go over here and add measurement. I'm going to use the multi-purpose knobs. Let's see, I want to measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So I just scroll down. Now I want to make sure I'm on source A. Obviously, that's the only thing that's plugged in right now. And so I want to go until I find peak-to-peak. -peak. And then I just press OK, measurement, turn that off. So now it's telling me I've got a, a peak to peak voltage of 1.6. And if I also want to measure the frequency, I can add measurement. And the frequency was up towards the top. Frequency, 
add, and there we go. So now I have the machine doing the work for me. This will tend to work best when you have a nice, smooth, repeating waveform. Uh, if you have something that's kind of noisy, uh, it's the, the measurements that it tells you is not going to be the true. Uh, so in that case, like if, if this signal had a, had a bunch of noise on it, maybe you want to actually just use the cursors uh, to get a little bit more precise measurement. All right, that is the three basic ways to measure a waveform.